Hi, in this penultimate video, we are going to be covering the process of being able to import a CAD model of a robot cell, assigning it the appropriate kinematics and all the coordinate system points needed to be able to match up the various elements and add robots and machining uh, projects to said cell. So first things first, we're going to grab a robot from the mechanisms library. So conveniently have the KL60 already highlighted here. I'm going to click add and place that in the scene. Now I'm just going to move this out of the way because it's slightly awkwardly placed for the moment. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mechanism from our CAD file, which will be freely available for you to download. The link should be in the description of this video. So to do so, I'm going to hover over the add mechanism button and I'm going to go to table fixed and I'm going to grab the file RT frame and click open. Now we can see we've got this rather nicely drawn up cell here. However, it's currently sat below the zero line in Z. So I'm going to move it up so it's at the zero point. And if I remember correctly, it's 550 millimeters low. So that certainly appears to be correct. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to define what is the static base in this. Uh, first, I'm going to name the base. And because of the way that this file has been constructed, uh, the static base has been booleaned together as a single item. Um, obviously, not every CAD drawing is going to be like this. So to actually associate elements as the base, you will either need to click every single part, or if there are some elements that are clearly grouped, you should be able to hold down Alt and then click them to grab the group. However, because this is all one piece, I can just click on it as the one piece and it gets colored in in black which indicates that that's our base unit now so i'm going to click on next at this point and we get to define the coordinate systems now so the first coordinate system i'm actually going to set as assembly equipment because we don't want that to be one that's uh, particularly usable uh, for machining purposes beyond it being a locating point for the base of the robot so i'm going to rename it as robot locator and I am going to hold down control and click on it and drag it roughly in the position. And you can see we've got that nice arc defined there, which tells me that it's uh, snapping to either the curve of this exterior here or the pillar below it. Um, either is fine. So we click on front and we want to bring this up to the top of this plate here. So the easiest way to do it, instead of trying to click and drag it and guesstimate it, is in Z, just highlight the number, scroll up on the scroll wheel, and it should bring it in pretty close to the point that we want. So if you're not sure, you could put in manual values, but here and now, that's perfectly aligned, which is exactly what we need. So we're going to click, OK, uh, we're going to leave that as is. I'm going to add a new coordinate system, which is going to be the rail locator. And we want this to be a nice and easy, memorable number. So we're going to set that as 0, 0, 0, because it doesn't get much easier to remember than that. And we're going to click Apply. Now you can see that this has gone and defined our base in the robot cell quite nicely so far. And uh, we should be able to snap our robot base straight onto the top here without any problems. So to do so, we're going to click on this. We're going to hold down Control. And you can see all of these coordinate system bases have been highlighted. We're interested in this one, obviously. So I'm going to drag this over. And we now get this nice green arrow to indicate that it's going to snap there. So if I release the mouse button here, it snaps it into position, which is perfect for our needs. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to define the rails. So to do so, I'm going to hover over add mechanism again. And I'm going to click on rail. Now open the same file again, and we are going to name this as the Rails mechanism. And for the, before we define anything, actually very nearly slipped up there, I'm going to type 550 in Z to raise it up to the height it needs to be, because the last thing we want to do is we want to start having to play around with heights later on. So for the base of the joints, we are going to select the static linear rails. And for the dynamic part of the joint, we are going to highlight that and then grab 
the sliding platform. So we are now going to click on Next. And this allows us to define our coordinate system points at this stage. So the first one we're going to do is we are going to name that Turntable Locator. And we are going to drag and click this. We need to get it into the center of this plate, but it, there's a couple of easy ways of doing it. And the one that I'm going to show you is holding down control, dragging it over. And you can see this edge line highlights and there's three dots on it. The left edge, the right edge and the center point. So we're going to drag it to the center point and leave it there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pan round. And since we can't easily locate by two center points reliably, or at least I've not figured out how, I'm going to click on Measure Tool, and I'm going to click on this corner, and then this corner to get this value of 450. And I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell Machine Maker that I want to move that point half of 450 along in Y. So I'm going to type in plus bracket 450 over two close brackets it's done the calculation dropped it straight in the middle for us which is perfect for our needs the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to define the other corresponding locator point uh, so i'm going to click on add user add new cs i'm going to type in rail connector here and i'm going to set this to match the rail locator value that we had before so that's zero 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 and I'm going to click on apply. Now, before I move this into place, we haven't actually defined the kinematics on this yet. So it's quite easy to do. We double click on it again to get back into the menu we were in before. And in the kinematics environment here, uh, we've got these min and max units, which describes the range of motion for that joint. So in the, I'm going to highlight the min number. And we can see that this uh, this indicator of the axial motion is not right for what we need. It's 90 degrees out. So I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees. You can also see that it doesn't really cover quite enough range. So an easy way of being able to define that without any kind of guesswork. If we click on front, so we've got a nicely slapped, uh, snapped side on view. In the minimum value box, I'm going to highlight and then scroll down to drag that across. So minus 390 looks good. And in the maximum value box, I'm going to scroll up and 1260 looks good. So I'm now going to click on apply and that's done. So we can now drag this over to its final position by holding down control and you can see this uh, coordinate system point here roughly corresponds with this and if we let that snap into place you'll see it's not just a rough correspondence it's a perfect correspondence which is exactly what we needed so the final part of this is to set up the turntable which is slightly more involved uh, so we hover over add mechanism now and we go for table one axis we grab the same file again we click open we raise it 550 and Z again. Now, um, I need to be able to change, uh, once we've changed the name, uh, the base coordinate system as well for this. So I'm going to turn on base CS edit mode, and I'm going to grab and move this so it goes to the center point of that base there. And we're going to do the same trick with the measuring tool that we did just now. So we're going to grab that point, we're going to grab that point, so that's 435. So in Y, I'm going to type in plus bracket 435 over 2, close bracket. And that's put it in that sense point, which is where we need it to be. However, it's also, for some reason, applied a minus 180 transform in the Z rotational axis, which is something we do not want. So I'm going to set that back to 0, and then I'm going to click on Next. Now, we don't need to worry about this warning for the moment. We're going to come back to this anyway, but this is just a way of locking in these values. So if we go back to model again, what we need to do is we need to define, we're being asked to define the base and the joint. Due to the construction of this model, there's no readily animatable turntable plate because this is all one solid piece. 
So we can ignore the Joint 1 designation for now, and we can just highlight the base and say, that's our turntable. So if we click on Next, we're going to get this 3D warning error again. Not a problem. We can just continue past it. Now, if I click on Front here, we can bring this Joint 1 uh, indicator down. We need it to sit roughly in the center of this gap here. Okay, so we'll do the scrolling down in the numerical entry method for that. That's perfectly fine. We now need to set this user CS, which is going to be called turntable, to the top of this level here. So we're going to scroll this down. And that's perfectly in place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to unlimited because otherwise it's stuck within a negative 180 to positive 180 uh, arc, which means that it won't be able to do things like uh, proper uh, helical milling or anything. It's going to be stuck exclusively on uh, rotating a full circle and then reversing. So we set this to unlimited and we click on apply. Now we've got this defined, we can hold down control and we want to join this coordinate system to this coordinate system so we move it over and we get the green arrow again and we've now got that snapped into place perfectly we can test that this all works by going into the run simulation environment and while we're not going to be able to see an awful lot by rotating the turntable we'll still demo it anyway to make sure that the kinematics are actively defined and yes that's reporting that it's defined. We can check the kinematics of the rail a little bit more coherently though by clicking on demo here and we can see it moving. Now, if the model had included a turntable plate that had say some drillings in it, we'd be able to see that it was turning. But in this instance, it doesn't unfortunately. Either way, this has got us a clearly defined and completed robot machining cell from a series of CAD models. I hope this has been informative and helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next video.